Waiting for a car. Waiting for a body. What? What's up guys, Jeremy here from RC Militia, um, and if, in case you're wondering if you're in a different spot, no, it's this is still the RC Militia channel, things have just switched up a little bit, and today we're going to do a collection video for you guys, um, it's been a while since we've done one, we've gotten a few new cars in, so I think it's appropriate to do one, uh, of course I'm going to start off with the Mugen just like I always do in any of them. Uh, the Mugen is hands down one of our favorite cars, just for the fact that it was my very first quote unquote kit. Um, all I had to do was put tires and wheels on and all that kind of stuff and electronics. Everything else on the chassis was already put together. But it was also Jamera's second body that she painted and it turned out pretty cool. Um, maybe we'll have some close-ups, we might not. But it's absolutely cool. She did a spiderweb theme on it and everything. So there's the Mugen for you guys and we'll move on to the next one. Okay guys, so here we have the Security 4. It is sitting pretty much how we want it to sit. We're going to have to mess with the body post a little bit and all that good stuff. Yes, we regret drilling holes in this thing even in the first place. We really weren't thinking on that one. Uh, we should have done something with magnets or Velcro or something. Should have figured something out. But uh, it is what it is, but it's Star Wars, so it's amazing in the first place. Uh, if you guys want to check out a full, like, you know, 360, whatever, of this body, uh, just type in Star Wars body on our channel and you'll come to that. We also have another body for it. So this one is the... It's an HPI body, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a 1966 Mustang. It's an HP body. It's a yeah. It's a 1966 Mustang, and I GT wanted Coupe. something just. Uh, you wanted something more stock. Yeah, I wanted something. I wanted something more stock, and Jamera definitely pulled it off on this one. I think this is the first time you guys are even seeing this body. So. Yeah, just pictures and then. There's the Facebook back and all that kind of stuff. And once again, this was all done with Jamera's uh, puffy paint. So it just looks like globs in there, but. It's pretty, pretty cool. And we'll move on to the next one, I guess. And now for the Traxxas Summit. Uh, we have had this thing for, uh, I don't know, I think this is probably our, yeah, I'm looking over at the collection here. We probably, this is probably the oldest car we have in our collection. Yes, it has a different body. Uh, Jamera will be going over this body and how she did the technique and all that kind of stuff. I do believe in a video that she wants to do. Um, as you'll notice, the tires do not match perfectly well with the body. Uh, we're trying to find tires right now. Can't really decide on some, uh, maybe looking for some used ones, but these things are shot after the video we did in the mud puddle with the uh, running on the Max Amps, uh, 9,000 mAh batteries I do believe, lots of run time, this thing took a hell of a lot of beating that day. And the tires as you can see, well, they're not up to par. It's, uh, it has, I, it has three-year-old dirt on it, uh, three-year-old mud that's caked in it. I do believe there's still water in the tires. Uh, there's probably some mold going on. So these things need to go. Uh, and then, let's see, what else are we going to do? We're going to do the tires. And then we're going to do a roof rack also. Um, and that's about it for the summit. But this guy will never be going anywhere. It's such a fun car. I think it's probably the most versatile and fun car in my fleet. And here we have the Bomber, uh, the Axial Bomber. This is our newest car, I want to say, in our collection. I no, it's not the newest car in our collection. We have one that we bought a little bit more recently. Well, it is the newest release in our collection. Uh, the Bomber is such a it's, it's such a cool looking car. I can't say anything about its performance or anything because we haven't got a chance to run it. We've had just nothing but snow. Uh, I do currently have broken ribs and torn oblique muscles, so getting out and doing running videos right now is a task in itself. Just getting out is a task in itself. But for the for plans for this thing, I think we're going to probably keep it mostly stock until stuff starts breaking. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep the stock electronics in there. Um, we are going to put a different body on it. We are going to do, uh, if you guys follow UFC at all, um, and if you followed me for a long time, I used to go by Leprechaun 79. I'm Irish. Huge fan of Conor McGregor, so we're going to do like a tribute to uh, when Conor McGregor beat the living snot out of Jose Aldo and knocked him out in 13 seconds. So, the ProLine Pro MT. This is hands down the, in my opinion, the best tool drive 
monster truck you will ever own that will ever be on the market unless Pearlman releases a new release of this one. I don't see anything even coming close to this. When you drive this, it feels like you're driving a four-wheel drive car and never in any way, shape, or form did I think I was driving a two-wheel drive car with the way it was handling. And we were on some really crappy terrain when we ran this thing for the very first time. As you can tell, this body's a little bit uh, beat up, but well, that's what they're for. And that's why you have backups. <laughs> So Jamera painted both these bodies. This one had a scorpion theme on it. And this one we did a, well it's a Ford Raptor, so we decided to go with the whole scene from Jurassic Park. Jurassic World. Jurassic World, I haven't even seen it yet. But so we did what, we kept with the, uh, well Jamera kept with the Ford Raptor, um, the markings, somewhat of the markings for the Raptor. And then we add the guy, you know, holding off all the Raptors, telling them to stay put and stay doggy, all that good kind of stuff. But uh, this is actually one of my favorite bodies that Jamera's done. This is before she did puffy painting, but it's just the color scheme and, I don't know, the shadowing and everything. I just think it's really cool and it's hands down one of my favorite bodies. So if you guys are wondering, you're not seeing double. This is the Viterra Twin Hammers. This is the Chinese knockoff. Uh, they perform Basically the same, the Viterra Twin Hammers is a little bit older, and I'm not sure if it's just because it's a little bit older, but this this one seems like it has a little bit a little bit more power. Um, as far as what you can see on the surface, I believe all the parts are compatible from what you can see on the surface. I'm not talking about the transmission or any of that kind of stuff. I haven't opened up these two to, to make that comparison myself. I'll, I'll open up a car when I break it. I'm not going to just open up to open it up just for the hell of it and weaken the plastics. Just, I just don't do that. But with that said, I mean, if you're going to buy one or the other, if you're on a budget, go with this one. If you're not on a budget, go with this one. Um, this one, you have the backing by Horizon Hobby and all that good stuff. This one, there's pretty much no backing, no guaranteed parts, part support uh, if the parts weren't compatible. Um, so with that said, the, there's these two guys. They're, they're fun as heck to drive. Both of them are amazing. They usually serve as a chasing toy for my dog. Uh, I love to drive these guys around in the backyard. We haven't really taken them out on the trails or anything. That's something we definitely need to do, and we will be doing it in the future. And here we have a car that has been driven once in circles because I didn't know how to drive it. It is, I'm used to pistol grips, and frankly, I hate these types of radios when it comes to cars. I know there is a way out there to make this thing so it can run on a pistol grip radio. I'm not sure what the answer to that is. If you guys know, post down in the comments below. Other than that, that's all I have to say about this car. It's it's fun to drive in the snow as far as I could get with it because I couldn't drive it. Uh, the plow is pretty cool. I do want to get the metal tracks for it. This is something I don't see going anywhere. I think we're just going to probably just build on it, put, uh, put a brush system in it maybe, uh, a, you know, a, lo a low torque brush system so it can get through the snow and all that and the metal tracks I think will help with that, but this is my main issue. Once this is gone, this will be seen a lot more on the channel. Okay guys, so we have one SCX-10 here that's cool, we have one here that is not cool. You um, shut your face, Grandma! <laughs> I did, well, I, I, I went overzealous with the stickers on mine, for sure, definitely went overzealous with the stickers, except for the RC Motion one maybe. But this is before Jamero was painting and all that good stuff. Um, the reason you have, you've never seen these things on camera is because, well, for me, I got so frustrated with everything going wrong with the builds in these cars that it made me not want to drive them. Uh, we still need to install the battery plates, and we have all those parts somewhere else. This is definitely something that we need to get out, and we need to start running. I mean, SCX-10s, they're, they're fun just to mess around with, but let's face it, guys, they're not a performance car in any way shape or form and then we have well I have the whole Walking Dead theme in mind so we have uh, Daryl and Merrill Merrill however the hell you say his name so Daryl's driving Merrill's passenger with a with a with a M4 getting ready to blow shit up and a then crossbow. what and a crossbow for Daryl and a crossbow for Daryl of course on the, on the on the side here so I'll put this guy off to the side then we'll discuss why this thing is such a hideous Shut terrible, up. terrible, terrible car. You suck. Okay, so number one, Jamera has, I don't know if you can see inside here, but right in here there's a uh, Mr. Egotistical, uh, I want $60,000. What was it? $60 million? I'm I want, not telling you. I want, a 60, I want a $60 million dollar contract and um, I'm going to get, you know, all these pictures with my new model girlfriend and I'm, I'm going to produce Miracle Water and uh, yeah, um, 
Yeah, he's, he's a pathetic player. <laughs> Sorry to all you Seahawks fans. And then the other problem with this is this Seahawks logo right here and the Seahawks logo on the side. No, I'm, just, I'm just giving you guys, I'm giving everybody a bunch of crap. Well, not when it comes to Russell, Russell Wilson, what I said is what I believe. But no, Jamero did take a lot of time on this body. If, if I could pop the top off of it, I don't want to do it, but she went into every little detail with, with puppy paint. This is actually the first time she experimented with puppy paint on a car, I do believe. Mm -hmm. And this is all on the outside. But uh, this body was a total pain in the butt to put together. Her transmission did not go together well. Um, I don't know. We just didn't have good good luck with these builds. And I think Axial needs to take note on a few things when it comes to uh, problems that are reoccurring with the XCX10s. I mean, they are a fun platform. They don't go super fast, so, you know, for kids, they're great. I mean, they're, it's a great all-around car for anybody, but like I said, it's not a high-performance car that can do a lot of crap, like the Wraith or the Yeti or the, I think, the, the Deadbolt. Definitely more performs better than that. Um, but, yeah, with that said, these two guys, that's why they haven't been driven. That's why they look all brand new and nice and shiny, and I'm not, I cannot promise how long they are going to look brand new and nice and shiny. Maybe for... Five more years until I decide to get back to these guys. So here we have two race. Uh, the Poison Spider one is Jamera's. The old one is mine. I, I still think the old one is way more cool looking. Plus you get the lights on it. Um, I did install a CKRC lowering kit on this one. So I don't know if you guys can tell the difference here, but mine is lowered by quite a bit. And Jamera's, before I put the CK, CKRC lowering kit on there, was actually lower than this one. So that's how much the CKRC lowering kit helps. And it's just a couple minutes worth of work and your car is lower and you get lower center of gravity is, is always better. We haven't put any upgrades on these. I'm debating with doing, between doing upgrades on this because I have stuff that will fit this as well as the deadbolt. And I'm debating whether to put them all on the this or the deadbolt, but I'm thinking I'm gonna do the deadbolt uh, Actually, I have no one to do the deadbolt, so there you go. That answers your question. Your own question, you. Yeah, yeah, it answers answer my yourself. own question. Uh -huh. and, and as far as this one, the reason it looks so brand new is because I know these bead locks and these tires suck right off the bat, and I know they're going to come off, and we just haven't had a chance to get around and buy new tires. When you're trying to take care of so many cars, it's so hard to get everything you need and not break the bank and be out on the streets begging for money. Uh, but the race, they are absolutely fun out of the box. Uh, they definitely need some weight up top. You know, a front front um, battery mount would be ideal for these things. I do believe I have one that was sent to me by Stephen Moore. And I need to get going on that with this. This has only been on the trails. Nothing crazy. No, you know, not on the rocks at all. Because it's just, it's just not set up. These things... When you see people crawling down steep hills and stuff like that, it's because they have the, the all the electronics set up perfectly and weight in the tires and correct weight here and there. And when they come stock, they're a little bit bouncy. Um, but that's the race for you. And these guys are one heck of a car right out of the box. They're fun as hell. And here we have two antennas. This is my pair antenna. It's, it's very pliable. It's very bendy. You don't have to worry about a break when you go up jumps. Now these guys are the micro high rollers. These things are a blast. They are small. They're fun. You can drive them outside, inside. Don't recommend driving on grass or anything like that, but pavement outside is fine. Um, they have plenty of speed for being as small as they are. And Jamera, I've had a lot of fun with these. I picked these up used for 60 bucks. And they're definitely cars that I will never sell. You, I mean, micros, I think they get overlooked quite a bit, especially ones of this size that you can drive inside and make little courses and stuff like that. It's probably one thing I should do is make a little, a little course for these guys. But they are a ton of fun, and that's really all you can say about the micro high rollers. They're small. They're fun. You, if you're going traveling or something like that, you can throw them in your luggage and have fun when you're traveling abroad. Which we actually do, guys. We actually pack our sea cars and play with them in hotels. Yes, we have, we have, uh, I, yes, and I do believe on one. Yeah, you ran into me. Yeah, I ran, when yeah. ran into you, yeah, on New Year's Eve. Yes, you did. Yeah, don't drink and drive our sea cars. In the hallways of hotel rooms. <laughs> on New Year's Eve. <laughs> but these guys are so much fun, and like I said, I got them for 60 bucks to use. I'm not sure how much they are new. I don't even know if they sell them anymore, but if you're going to buy one of these in the one. 36 scale, I do believe. If not, it's 124th, but I think these are 136th. 
These are the ones to go with. They're just so much fun. And they are so freaking durable for how little they are. Okay, so Kyosho DRX VE. It's the only rally car or slash on-road car that I do believe we have. No, we have one couple up and running. Um, this car can take a beating like a buggy. Uh, if you want to see the running video, just type in Kyosho DRX VE running video and you'll find it. When I took this out, I was not expecting the performance that I got out of it. Uh, for the money you pay for this car and the performance you get, this is probably one of the most well-rounded cars out there. It's so much fun to drive off-road. It's it's good on-road. I mean, it's just it's just good everywhere. It's a good all-around car. The body is so realistic, with the headlights being recessed and not just stickers and all that. And it's just an amazing car. It's probably one of my most favorite cars just to sit and look at as a, you know a stock body and stuff like that it's just it's just an amazing car Kyosho makes anything that I've had by Kyosho has been been good but this is the main the, the biggest purchase I've had from Kyosho and personally I'd like to get more of their stuff here's the newest car that we have in our fleet uh, I'm not going to give you the backstory on why I bought a, a very old car that's like 10 years old um, frankly I just love the HPI e Firestorm Flux when I had it, and I had the very first version, that was fun, and recently I was, said, well, I want the newer version, so we got the newer version. I'm going to try and hit 80 miles per hour with this car uh, as soon as the snow and the wetness gets off the roads, because this thing is going to do nothing but just spin out with, with it being slick outside. And, but we really want to get this thing out there, get a radar gun, that's one thing we're going to start doing, and just get out and driving more as soon as, as, soon as possible. But... The HPI E Firestorm Flux is always a good car to go to. It's a it's a great starter car. It's a great car for you know from start to finish. This is this is a car that's good and either this or the Blitz should probably be in your fleet. I, I would recommend it definitely. Um, either this or the Blitz for sure. Axial Exoterra. Most people either love it or hate it. I friggin' love it. We beat the living hell out of this thing on the very first run. We haven't had a chance to fix it. Like I said, guys. When you have so many cars, it's hard to keep up on all of them, and sometimes you just you have to break everything. Gotta drive you once. Drive. <laughs> you break everything you drive, and so it makes it a little yes. hard. And the only upgrades we've done on this is the Proline Power Strokes. The shocks on this thing out of the box are absolutely horrendous. Two of mine didn't even have oil in them. Uh, but you know that's an oversight on a lot of companies' parts. Um, but the only thing we broke on this was. I think the A-arm is what is broken on this. No, that's the... Yeah, well, I'm going to do this again. No, I like the beginning part. So, um, just, you already introduced it, and then keep going. I can do that beginning part right over. Okay, good. But I, it was really good then. So, Axial Exoterra. Uh, either you love it or you hate it. I absolutely love it. The only uh, performance parts we put on it, performance parts, the only upgrades we put on it, is the Proline Power Stroke shocks, which made a world of difference because, well, the shocks that were on it were pretty much non-existent. They didn't have oil in them. They were, they did, they just sucked. Let's just be frank, but just, they sucked. Uh, we only broke it in, in one spot. I'm not sure exactly what is broken. I'm gonna have to look at it a little bit further. But this is another car that's not going to be going anywhere in any way, shape, or form. Everybody said this car is just a piece of crap, and Jamir and I took it out to probably the most extreme jumps we have taken a car to and this thing i mean god i hit a ramp a wooden ramp head on with it and that's probably what caused the bust but this thing just kept going it kept going like a champ uh if you want to see the running video of this one i do believe it's called crap i don't know just search the channel and you'll find it i don't know what the hell this thing is if you guys haven't been annoyed by it by now, I have a very squeaky chair that needs some WD-40 on oh, it, so we're, these blockers. we're gonna have to take care of that, so sorry for the squeaking. Oh, now. Oh, squeaking. sure. Yeah. When I go to squeak, it doesn't <laughs> no, squeak. No, it doesn't do it. That's how it works. So here... <laughs> so here we have the Axial Deadbolt. Uh, yes, I am in the processing uh, process of waterproofing it. So far, the servo's been done. Uh, basically... It's all been done, I just need to put everything back together. Oh, I know the reason I stopped is because I have a bunch of Vanquish parts that I want to put on this and some Axial uh, links. And I think that's about it that we have for upgrades for it. Uh, of course, it comes with this body, which it, it's honestly not 
too bad looking. That's not bad. I, I made more fun of it in the unboxing than I should have because it's not a bad looking body. I actually do like it. But it was just a lead in for what Jamara did. So this was her first puffy paint body. Oh, yeah, it puffy was paint on the inside. Puffy paint on the inside. All this is done on the inside. If you guys don't know what puffy, puffy paint is, just go ahead and Google it and you're going to be like, oh, what the hell? Why the hell are they painting with that? Man, well, you understand. Let's just see some of Jamara's painting videos. Uh... It's a whole Batman theme. I think you came up with this on your own, didn't you? Just just want to do Batman for some reason? Yeah. yeah. I want to do a black and white comic strip theme, yeah. and so, Batman worked perfect. And, and it looks really cool on here. Let me see. I don't know if I can even get to go on right now with it being in shambles. But you get the you get the gist of it, pretty much. But the Deadbolt, it's, it's, it's a fun car. I, I, I do believe it was what... Not the actual Deadbolt, but the AX10 platform is what I think Axial actually started out with. And they are fun to drive, plenty of wheel speed right off the bat. They definitely need more weight up front. They're bouncy just like the Wraith, but that's why I'm going to work on this one and I want to make this one a really good rock crawler so I can actually go out and have some fun on the rocks once in a while. So, Team Associated RC8.2E-149 Roger Tango Delta Alpha something. Uh, it has a long name, but this is the RC8.2e. Uh, it is such a fun car to drive. We had the body custom painted by uh, Easy Customs, Eric Everett. I don't know if he's still painting or not. I do believe he is. Um, and I dyed the wheels red. I cannot remember what color they were, but I know they look like crap with the color scheme of the body. And the body has skulls and stuff all over it. And some checkers and it's 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 a it's a pretty cool body, um, but this car and the Mugen, well, you guys know how much I love buggies and how much you know. I, they are one of the toughest RCs out there. I have yet to be able to break this one and the Mugen. I don't think I could ever break it. I, I think it could probably survive, freaking an atomic bomb. Um, but with that said, you know. Buggies are great cars, and the three that I could recommend the most are the Mugen, any any Mugen buggy. Uh, this 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 is the only team associated buggy I've ever owned, so I could definitely recommend this one. And then the Vorza Flux. Now the Vorza Flux is I had it in the past, and it just doesn't jump or handle like these guys at all. It's it's a basher, but I still believe these ones will make better bashers and. Well, this one's under the price point of the Vorza. The Mugen is above and beyond. So, if it came down to this, if somebody's going to ask me would I take this or the Vorza, I would, I would, I would go with this. Honestly, would. All right, guys, and here we have the Traxxas Rustler that has never been driven, never will be driven. Uh, the reason for that, well, I think I explained that in my other videos, but I'll go ahead and explain it now. It was the very first car I ever owned. I sold the one that I owned at first, and then I bought this one, and I was like, I'm just going to put a crap load of aluminum on it, you know, colored parts. We still haven't done a custom body for it. Jamira's had a, a body for it for, let's see, I don't know, ever since we bought the car. It's been about, what, a couple of years now that it still hasn't been painted? You but don't want that body. All it's these a Seahawks body. Yeah, it was a Seahawks body. It we, is a we Seahawks We were going with Seahawks colors it's and stuff. It's a Super Bowl And that's, body. that's back before Russell Wilson. All right. So, anyway, we have a T-Bone racing bumper on the front, a T-Bone skid plane on the bottom, uh, some aluminum parts, I cannot tell you exactly what aluminum is what. I think all the hubs and all that, yeah, that's all Traxxas. Uh, the bulkhead is STRC, the steering rack is STRC, the top plate is Intigy, uh, the little little battery tie down here is uh, Intigy, uh, a lot of green Traxxas parts and RPM stuff, so... Yeah, and this one probably will never get driven. I don't know. I may change my mind after driving the HPI. I may want to do some comparison and speed tests against these two. Actually, you know what? We probably will do that, and I can just buy another wrestler and make it another shelf queen. Just gives me another chance to buy another car. Uh, but yeah, the wrestler is, once again, like I said with the HPI, definitely a good car to get started in the hobby with. And I'm always going to have one in my collection. Same along with the HPI E4 Sprint Flex. They're great cars. All right, guys, and here we have a Viterra. This is the Viterra CHP Camaro. I don't know, it has some really long freaking name, but that's what I'm going to call it. I bought it just for the fact that it was a cop car. It's a Camaro, and it's cool looking. I do prefer Mustangs over Camaros. Don't start debates in the comments below, or I'm just going to delete them. Um, but it has working lights both on the front, 
not on the rear. Uh, on the top, it has it's the the body is so scale is absolutely ridiculous, and that's why I bought it. I basically bought it just for the looks. We'll end up driving it one day, um, maybe do like a chase scene or something like that once I get the Tamiya's going. It seems like every time I buy a Tamiya car, I screw up the body on it, and then Tamiya bodies are so expensive, and yeah, that's basically my excuse for not driving this. Basically, we only bought it for like a chase scene or something, do something like that, and uh, hopefully we'll get to that in the future. But with that being said, you know, going and looking at Matera's cars... I think it is one heck of a line to buy. Everything seems super solid on this. And yeah, and all in all, I just bought it because it's a cool looking car. All right guys, so this is the Tamiya TTO-1 ED. Uh, we don't have a body for it because we screwed up on the painting, or on the painting, we screwed up on the cutting of the body. So we it was the Nissan GTR. And, well, I'm not going to say we screwed up on the cutting of the body because... Are you throwing me under the bus right now? Because I did not cut the body. Jamera cut the body. It was a, it was a perfectly... It was, it, it was a gorgeous body with a gorgeous candy red. Which I did. And she just she just made this cut and the, 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 yeah, the body was just destroyed. Would you like me to go get the body you painted that's in my car? <laughs> for it? And then you can see that? Anyway, let's... So... There's not much to say about this. It's a Tamiya TT-01. You guys have seen them all before. Uh, they're fun cars. I really want to start driving my Tamiya's, but I just seem to have body problems all the time. So that's that. And so here we have an unboxing. Not really. Is the car even in here? Okay. So, the Tamiya TT-02, uh, what was it? The, the Porsche 911 Carrera RSR. This has a, what do we do on this? Traxxas, a servo, the waterproof servo that tracks, no, the high-tech waterproof servo, spectrum receiver, um, it's a speed passion reinvention, I can't remember, but, yeah, it's a speed, it's a speed passion electronic setup, I don't have anything on it right now, um, as far as wheels and tires go, because I wanted to get the body done before I did all that, so I stopped in my tracks, tried to paint the body, I tried doing the whole liquid, liquid mask technique, and then... I started peeling off the liquid mask, and my body started to look like, well, Crap. frankly, baby puke looks <laughs> better than it. And regurgitated food, a pile of dog poop <laughs> looks better than it. Uh, <coughs> it is absolutely horrendous. Uh, maybe I will reveal it on camera one day just to show you guys why Jamera paints bodies, and I don't. <laughs> but I really want to get this thing going because I think we have a good setup in it. It's a, it's a, it's a good solid car, and once we get all these Tamiya's going. Maybe set up a chase scene with the with the cop car and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, uh, I'll, I'll maybe I'll just throw up on Facebook if you guys follow us on Facebook and you can see how horribly I failed with this body. It's just terrible, absolutely terrible. That's my story with Timmy. Cars are great. I screw up on the bodies, and then everything goes south from there. So we have three little guys sitting in front of us right now. Two one eighteenths, one one twenty fourth. Uh, this is the team associated mini rival monster truck. That's pretty monstrous, don't you guys think? Uh, we've the only upgrade I have on this is the RPM front bumper. Um, we're gonna do wait no, I have sh yeah I have shocks. I have upgraded shocks on it as well. We drove it once and it was so slow. It's ridiculous. I do have a um, brushless setup that I want to put in it. I just haven't got around to doing it. And frankly, I do not like working on little cars. This is another one I bought just because it looks and just just to have fun with around the house. Um, but I do want to put a brushless system in it and, I don't know, take it off some jumps and make this little guy go flying. This is the low C S, the, what is it called? What is this one? I don't know, the one that died in a bit. I, I don't even remember what it's called. It's the low C S C T E. It's the, it's the mini version of it. Um, the story behind this one is why, it, why, I used to drive it in the house quite a bit. And then my pit bull, Diamond, that passed away, it's coming up on three years. <clears throat> Um, she bit the antenna off of it, and then when she passed away, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep it as it is, just as a memory f for my dog, and so it's just going to sit as it sits, it's going to collect as much dust as it does, and it's going to stay with me forever just because of that reason. And this is, oh my gosh, the Duratrax Vendetta, oh, I can't remember, I even remember that name, I can't believe I remember that name. These things are cool little cars. They come with all kinds of aluminum and everything on that. The only thing that's holding this thing back is 
uh, I do believe we bought it off of eBay, and the all the electronics were complete crap. And it, in all honesty, these electronics that come in these cars are complete crap. They are just a wonderful platform to start building off of. They don't even make them anymore. That's why I'm not selling this one. I don't know if we'll get it running or not, but I'm just going to hang on to it because they don't make it anymore. I, I don't know. I have stupid reasons for hanging on to cars, whether it be they don't make it anymore or it serves of some type of memory to me. And I don't know. That's why I keep hanging on to these guys. Cars. As you guys all know, this is the Axial uh, Yeti. It's, it's the baby. Uh, they make the XL version and the, this one, so I call it the baby Yeti. Um, Let's see. Okay, so on this one we have Vanquish Method 101 wheels. Uh, we have the Vanquish hubs for it. I don't remember what aluminum is in the rear of this car. Oh, Topcat. It was Topcat. Uh, Topcat stuff, don't buy it. Just go ahead and go with the Vanquish stuff. I bought it because I was on a budget. Um, the only, actually, the only real complaint I have about the Top Cat stuff that I that I have on this is this diff cover. This diff cover literally feels like you could just squeeze it and bend it. it doesn't even feel like it's would be metal. It's so light. I mean, it's it's kind of pathetic. So I'm gonna buy a Vanquish one for that. Either that or the uh, I think Poison Spider makes a diff cover for it or something. Yeah, I I think I'm not sure. But so other than that, there's no upgrades under underneath the underneath the shell at all. Um, the main upgrade we have for it, which is really cool, is a body that was painted, I don't even want to touch it, get fingerprints on it. A uh, body that was painted for us by uh, Chris DeGroff over at Hemistorm RC. Uh, you can, if you want to go to his channel, uh, just type in, oh my gosh, I don't know. Just just search for this video. It'll show up pretty prominently. Uh, but it's a Spokane shock body and, well, you guys can just go and look in the description below to see why this body was painted and the meaning behind it and all of that good stuff. We don't have the interior in it yet, so that's one thing we got to do. We got to get the interior off of this and out of this cage and onto here. Uh, I think we'll actually make that a video in itself. Um, might as well. So, but there's a lot more plans that are coming for this thing. This car is actually we're going to be driving uh, our wedding rings down the aisle, and you'll know the backstory when you go back and watch the other video. But so it's going to be sitting on here, and it's going to. Well, let me just stick it on real quick. And that, mind you, this is without the interior in there, so it's not going to look quite as good. And it's not mounted how it's supposed to with the without the interior on there. So let me see if I can do some some somewhat of justice with sitting it. So it'll be sitting somewhere like that. And frankly, this thing looks amazing. And this car will never be driven except for at our wedding. And then it's going to probably go in a case in our house, in a glass case, and just have it sit there, have maybe have a glass case with some lights come down on it and all that. But uh, I will be buying another Yeti to drive. And I don't know. This this is this car is going to hold a definitely a, a special place in both mine and Jamara's heart for a very, very long time to come. Well, until we die, pretty much. Big Yeti! <laughs> so we took this thing out to the ORV park on our very first run and I beat the living crap out of this thing. Uh, the body, uh, let's see what we do. We cracked the cage on it, uh, we stripped the hexes on it, um, we broke a part of the chassis that mounts, that's why this body is going back and forth like that, so it's all easy fixes. Well, except for the tires, because I want to buy new all new tires and wheels for it, just as I do the Summit. But when it comes to buying 3.8s, it gets pretty pricey, guys. It's like 100 bucks for a set of four, and you know how many cars we have. A lot of them need a lot of love, so it's kind of hard to place where we want to put our money as far as when it comes to broken cars and getting them back up and running. Excuse me, but I think this one should definitely be on the forefront, uh, up right up there with the Summit. They are... They're amazing cars, and this thing, I mean, we beat the crap out of it. Uh, if you go back and look at the video, it may not seem like it's going over that rough a terrain, but there's rocks the size of like that that this thing was hitting, and it was just, and I was going full speed on, um, I was running uh, some Max Amps, the 6000 MH 3S batteries. So much power, guys. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. You don't need that power. Do I recommend that power? Yeah. Um, 
but 2S would be perfectly fine as well. All in all, this car is just absolutely fun to drive. The Losi Mini 8. This thing will take a beating and keep on going with a few upgrades. The first thing is a uh, shock tower to protect your shocks because the shock caps on these things pop off like crazy. Uh, we have a lot of upgrades into this. We have RPM A-arms. I can't remember the Delrin shock tower. I can't remember who that's made by. We have a hot racing carbon fiber rear shock tower, T-bone bumpers, front and rear, and I think that's about it for upgrades. As you can see, this thing is pretty, pretty dirty. We've used it a lot. Um, I absolutely love this car on the 3S with these things. They absolutely just freaking fly, and they are just so much fun, and they are really, a, a really, a really, a really good bang for your buck. This thing will go not everywhere, but an eight scale buggy will go, but it will go just about just about anywhere the eight scale buggies go, and it's just as durable if you put some of the parts on it. So, love this thing. Probably my favorite mini. That's the very first car we ever got together. Oh yeah, this and is, that's yeah. the one you ran into me at the hotel. This is the very yeah oh yeah. Did you remember just brought this up? This is the very first car that we ever bought together. There's a couple. This is yeah we. Mm -hmm. God, you didn't even know. Four and a half years ago. Yeah, four and a half years ago. So that's nostalgia for you, and we'll be hanging on to it just because of that one as well. Um, I really don't think I'll be getting rid of my RC cars and any of them any, ever again. So I don't know. I'm, I'm probably gonna buy a second house for an RC car, <laughs> just for RC cars. But this thing, and it also has a metal chassis too. That's something you don't get out of. You know something this size. This this little guy was literally a game changer for the size class that it's in because I mean nothing can nothing can compare to it. I mean nothing. Okay, so I know the I said the low seed mini eight buggy couldn't be beat. Uh, this is probably one that is along those same lines. Um, however, we did break this one quite a bit easier, but we were on different. No, we weren't on different types of trains. This one just doesn't hold up as good as the other one. I don't know for some reason. But, uh, the only thing we did break, though, and it was because we were running on a very, very iffy area. We were running on, like, mountain bike trails that were so small, and I hit this thing full force into a tree, so no wonder it broke. Um, the air didn't break on it. That's the, I think the front, God, I'm not sure what part it is. I'm going to have to look into this one more as well. Um, but anyway, so with this one... It's just as cool as the as, as the buggy. Um, it's a little bit bigger, so it can handle rougher terrain and you know uh, go. Over, it has more ground clearance, so it can definitely clear a lot more than the buggy can. As well, you guys can see the difference between the two. Uh, well, you can't right now, but um, but anyway, one thing about this that was really cool is I got this in and I didn't have any batteries that could fit it, and I went into Max Amps. And they did not have a battery that could fit it. So they made this little battery tray, and you can go and buy them. Um, it's, I, and maybe I'll put the link in the description below. If not, just go and search on Max Amp's site and just, you know, look at the, the Losi Mini Buggy or the Truggy, and you'll find these. And what it does is it makes it so the battery sits in there perfectly, and you can fit a little bit bigger battery in there. Um, I run 3S on both of these. I do believe they're. 1800 milliamp or 1600 milliamp packs um, but that was one cool thing max amps went out of their way and it's available to everybody out there so I highly recommend getting one if you have one of these cars well, actually get one if you have one of these cars I demand it uh, but with that said I think we'll move on to the next car and I think we're almost done guys so we have the big low C uh, I just showed you it's 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 a little counterpart uh, so this is the big guy uh, there's different versions of this there's a Nitro, there's a gas, and there's an electric version. Oh, no. I don't know. If yeah, I think there's an electric version of it. Not sure. Honestly, I'll tell you the truth. But with this, we just got it uh, recently. You guys probably know that these went on sale on Tower Hobbies for, what did we get it for? $269? Mm -hmm. $269 for for this guy, and it, they are regularly, I do believe, $799 or $8.99, or $8 somewhere in that price range. So, a bunch of us uh, bought one, um, Reed from Urban RCLA bought one, Vasco from Aussie RC Playground bought one, Chris from Hemistorm bought one, and I bought one. Um, so I think that's most of the guys from the channel that actually bought one of these things. 
there is issues with this car. Um, and that's why Horizon had them go so cheap. Uh, if you go and look at uh, Aussie, RC's play, Aussie RC's play, Aussie RC's playground, fuck! <laughs> if you go and look at Aussie RC playground's videos, you will, it took me a couple times to get that one out, guys. Uh, you can see he did a very lengthy review, a very good and informative one um, of, of what this car, this car's problems are. And I'm not going to go into that. You can go over and watch his video of that and he can inform you a whole lot more than I can about it because I haven't been able to run mine. Number one, it's been too cold. Number two, uh, winter, wetness, all that kind of stuff. And I just don't want to break in this engine in the cold. I know the braking process is very, very lengthy on this. It's, I think it's 18 tanks, 16 or 18 tanks. And then you come to an issue with um, the car constantly losing bind. And that is happening between the receiver pack and the ignition box. Something in there is causing, causing the car to make the radio unbind. So that's the gist of it. But like I said, if you go and watch... Uh, RCRC Playgrounds video on this car. He gets into it much more detailed than I could because, well, he's experienced it and I haven't. I'm just going off uh, based on what he said and based of what a lot of us within the, multi the radio control network have been talking about when in regards to this. But we are in works with um, a company to try and make this car all it can be and not have to strip it out and make it electric and keep it gas. And that's hopefully where what the end result will be is keeping this thing gas and if not we will I'll, I will convert it to electric actually I would probably convert it to nitro maybe uh, just because I don't have any nitro cars that's that's another thing I wouldn't mind getting in, into a little bit more is, is some nitro here and there I would love to find a low C10 T uh, I absolutely love that tr that the car I mean that was my first nitro and it hardly there was hardly any learning curve with that engine for some reason that engine and that low C 10 T I guess is super super good low C even on the instructions said you don't have to uh, break that engine in don't go by that I wouldn't go by that but uh, but anyway getting off topic there but so there's lots of plans and hopes high hopes for this car in the future and we will see what the future brings us for this car all right guys so here we have the low C 5 T and uh, as you can see you guys are probably going to say, why haven't you ran this, Jeremy? Why haven't you made a lot of running videos? Jeremy doesn't have anywhere to drive it. And I just referred to myself in the third person. I feel like a douchebag right now. Anyway, uh, we put a bunch of stuff on it. Okay, so I, I broke it in, and then we took it out, and we ran it once. And we really can't find a place to drive it. So, But at the same time, we've had debates about getting rid of it or keeping it or not. Jeremy and I were just talking about it, and we decided just literally before we got this car onto the table, uh, we decided to, we're, we're going to go ahead and keep it and not even debate it anymore. But with that said, we got to find somewhere to run this thing. Um, I don't know if I should turn it into an on-road car of some sort or or what, but uh, it does have all the uh, outer wear stuff that I need for it. I'm not going to go over every single solitary thing I have in this. Uh, it's the low C5T, guys. It speaks for itself. This car was engineered so well. It's it's it's. A, it's just a badass car. Wow, I did the body. I did not. Um, I do have plans, though, hopefully in the future, getting a, a body, one of the Penta bodies um, from Hemistorm. It makes it a whole lot cooler looking. And I think maybe putting some road tires on it and the Penta body, I think that may be more of a dual situation because literally we cannot find places to run this thing in Spokane, Washington, where we live. It is, it is almost impossible but with that said it is just cool to have a car of this size in your collection so uh i think that we are finally done are we done yeah, we're done all right so with that said guys we're done i hope you made it through all the video um if you did give it a thumbs up comments always are appreciated like share comment subscribe all that good stuff um, make sure you go check out the Radio Control Network's uh, channel, um, well, our Facebook page, and uh, make sure to uh, click the like button and follow us. Uh, subscribe to all the all the guys if you can. All a bunch of great guys. 
With that said, guys, I'm tired. I'm tired of talking. You guys are probably tired of hearing me. So I'm going to wrap it up, take it easy, and we'll see you on the next one. These lights are bright. I'm trying to get used to them. It's hard. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I should wear some sunglasses. No, I just think it's easy.